Game of Thrones edition of the scenario. Hip hop Game of Thrones edition. Yes. Are just black people. It originally started out as hip hop, but we turned it into Game of Thrones for the culture. Yeah, for the culture. There we go. Uh, I am Daryl Frierson. Hold up. <laughs> it's full. Uh, y'all know he's eating. I'm right? still eating. <laughs> of course he is. I didn't get hungry until we started doing the show. I sat here ate and everything while we were finishing up. I didn't want to see you eat that trick for life. You, so you had to you had to you had to keep it away, keep it away from me. Keep it away from myself because then I would go later. And I already <laughs> had fried chicken strips earlier today, <laughs> and I can't keep living that life. I, I it is what it is. I'm about to be living that vegetables and and. Is that what the lady gonna have you try to no, have? No, this is all me. My thing is okay. all me. It ain't on. I'm not even. I don't even let it get to her because then she'll be on some truly crazy stuff. So like. I just take it on myself. You have to do it by your own only because if she'll try to make you hold on to it where it become a... No, like a she mission. wants to, like, she's extreme. She doesn't do moderate dieting and I'm not doing that. So, <laughs> so that it's either that or set myself up to be in a position to lie and I don't want to have to do that. So, yeah, I, I when know. I inevitably fall off and do something I ain't supposed to, so I just walk myself into it. All right. Hey. So, this is Game of Thrones, so... Um, it's, it's one of the most special weeks. It's a week that we've been waiting on for two years now at this point. Like, legitimately two years. We've been waiting on the conclusion of Game of Thrones. And, you know, like, I don't know about y'all, if y'all listen to this, if you listen to it still at this point, if you clicked on it, you probably are as big of a head as we are. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know us and you know how we get down. We are heads for hip hop. We are heads for pop culture. We are heads for all of that. So we just decided to run all these worlds together with the big question. What if Westeros was black? Like, what if it was just brothers up and down mm -hmm. throughout Westeros? Who would it look like? What would it be? <laughs> this is, I mean, we're not, like, as we once, as we always say before people get the trip, and it's not your cousin Earl and nobody like that, mm -hmm. we have a category for that in the Black History Month yes. draft every year. So you can wait for that for your time to chime in with your friend from off fair and uh, costumes. Indeed. Uh, so, but this is not the time for that. They would not be high-born people. Right. Right. There are people we wouldn't even know. They'd be just random people they would be on the Telltale game. Yeah. They there's like the side characters you get to play with on the Telltale game where you get to choose your mission with. Those would be your, your family members in this. Rest in peace to the Telltale universe. Yeah, man. Them cats still looking for their checks. That was a big loss. Yeah, they, 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 they uh, let that go with people on month back on their checks, too. Somebody got to step up and, and fill that in. Yeah, because I, I like those games. Yeah. Those games were cool. Um, all right, so let's go and get into it, man. We'll uh, have some emails. We got a couple uh, of I mean, I want to wait because some people have stuff we're going to want to talk about right afterwards. We can. We got a few minutes. Uh, I mean, all right. So we're going to go to our voicemail first. Voicemail from our homeboy, Ronald Taylor. And hold on. We're going to be into it right now. Straight out of low cash, your boy BTG. Yeah, y'all absolutely right, goddammit. The homies go to the movies. We all go to the movies. Look, the wife is not going to... She's not going to see no horror flick with me. You know, she, she tried it with her. She got over that. You know what I'm saying? But that's 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 it. You know, I mean, she's going she's going to go see us because, you know, and she saw Get Out. But that's it. You know, her anxiety and panic attack and shit like that, that start flickering off. And she'll walk out that bitch. And I ain't got time for that because I'm going to watch the whole goddamn movie. So that's why you go with certain homies or whatever. Nine times out of ten, it's in the morning or the afternoon. You know what I'm saying? Two seat space. And it's cool, you know what I'm saying? Me and I, you know, me and one of the homies went to go see Crash. It was it was late at night too, and we sat, sat about several seats away from each other. And that's when we bumped into Rashard McCants. Shout out to Rashard McCants sneaking in at Snow Bunny in Santa Monica. <laughs> uh, but uh, another thing, so when y'all was talking about cats shitting on St. Louis, the crib or whatever, uh, I kind of, I, you know, what I feel y'all because, you know, being from LA. When people move out here, it no, it's nothing irritating than folks that come out here, they stay for like a year or two and either move back. And then they say, well, this is how L.A. folks is. No, you can't really fully know how L.A. cat is just by living out here a year or two. It just doesn't happen like that. Why? Because, first of all, you got generations of L.A. cats. You know what I'm saying? Now, we have one, you know, we got one government under one culture. But it's different, you know, like Compton and Inglewood is not the same city. Just like South Central and 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 uh and Compton is not the same city. You know, Watts is not the same. So, you know, it's LA niggas, but we stay in different jurisdictions, you know what I mean? So it's nothing more irritating than people coming out here and saying this is how it is out here. But it's not. I think you would have to be 
you know, raised out here somewhere around the 80s and in the, the 90s to really understand what was going on. You know, and the crazy part is I've had cats move from the same state to L.A., two different cats that say the total opposite things, but they knew how L.A. cats was. So that's all I know. It, it's not it's it's not cool. It's not it's not cool at all. You know what I mean? But, you know, it, a, a lot of people are, are, you know, that's that stay in L.A. that's been out here for years, that's been out here since the 60s and 70s come from the South. You know what I'm saying? My grandma and, you know, the whole the whole lifeline come from the South or the Midwest. Now, they would know more about L.A. than anybody, you know, but I was born and raised out here. Certain things just don't go, you know. But um, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. And one cat that you cannot replace right now has got to be T.I. And not early T.I., okay? I'm talking about expeditionously T.I. I don't even know if that was a word. And, I don't, and if that is a word, I don't know if I, if I said it right. But definitely expeditiously or expeditiously, T.I. cannot be replaced. All right, y'all. I'll holla. See you, BT the Great. Uh, you can check out his podcast, BT the Great. I know. Uh, shout out to you with your podcast as well. Um, movie thing, man. I think Crash is actually a movie you're supposed to take a white woman to. For the record, I was thinking about that. As you said, Rashad McCancel was there with a white woman. <laughs> you think Rashad McCancel doing some education? Or is he no, just... I just think that it's like a prerequisite. If you're not going to go with your homeboys, you got to go to the white woman. But do you think that Rashad McCants was on that? Or he just happened, that just happened to be who he No, was? I believe he's on that. But then he just happened to be th- part of the theme for the night. I feel like he was just going with who was going to pay for him to go. But he got paid for it, especially at that time. That's fine. But the, what's the easiest way to keep your money? <laughs> By not spending it. Exactly. <laughs> and when you bur- when you born and bred down on Tobacco Road, there's a certain way you used to be treated. Yeah. And he's making sure he keeps on getting treated. Treated the way. same way. Look, he was like, I came from the school where they're gonna try to show me love like they do at a UNC. Um. Yet. Um. This. I mean, the people disrespecting the crib. I mean, I mean, the worst is when people from here disrespect it. And act like oh yeah, you know. like when people leave and they feel like they don't know how to like act. Like yeah, but then but then if then you go down there and actually to see him and hang out, well, he'd be like, you actually in worse conditions here than you were in St. Louis. To be you're fair, in, fair with you're you. in tough shape. You make yeah. me want to leave you with like a couple lunches. Like you make me want to go to the store and pack a couple of bags for you. Right, no, maybe I bring some London and Sons for you, a couple of boxes. No, on. I'm eating that. <laughs> it won't make it by the time you get to Atlanta. You don't get to move and get nice things. It's not. But yo, speaking of which, I was at the airport a couple weeks ago, and they had dude had two cases of White Castles open. They were searching his White Castles, making sure he wasn't taking nothing up out of there. Now, can you imagine running a finger through sixty White Castles? That's not a life I'm interested in. So they were opening up them all. Yeah, they were running their finger through the White Castles to make sure there wasn't nothing in there. They had the gloves on at least. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I yes, like, I guess it's been a nightmare. You like fuck it. I don't even want. They weren't this going. Shit. They weren't going one hundred percent raunchy style. I'm surprised the motherfucker didn't just try to check them. I don't know. Do you want to check? Will they allow you to check White Castles? You'd have to put them in a in a soundproof bag, even though it's about to smell. I wouldn't even want to be able to hear that's going on in there. Can you imagine putting some White Castles under the plane and everybody get their lug- they luggage and it smell like some White Castles? Oh, yeah. Everybody's fucked up in the game. I, but I'm going in knowing that all my clothes are already dirty, so I don't even fuck it. Oh, no. <laughs> you're, you're going 100% scummy as is. Yeah. They yeah. can pack their suitcase and they open it up and they number White Castles in Never there? Number White Castles in there. Oh, Lord. Number White Castles in there. Lord, never. Uh, shout out to uh, all the people that has been uh, hitting me up, uh, letting me know if they see me anywhere else that I am on the Thought Tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, thought tour would be going international. Yeah, uh, as I would be uh, in London next week. Pip pip cheerio, yes, cheerio. I'm, My I'm a re- chap. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find Twenty One Savage and the Mother Red Coats. Bring him back, dog. Yeah, I'm trying to bring him home, baby. Is he? He's here though. Yeah, he's back here though, and he's not even technically from London. He's like one of those islands that were like London owned. Oh, colonizer. Yeah, it was a colonizer. He's not He's not a full red coat. There's a word for that. That's called hostile takeover. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, they actually, though, that, yeah, they hostile took over the island from the Native Americans, and then they brought niggas there in ships. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, shout out to all our brothers and sisters that are English, but aren't English. All right, cool. They weren't they born in the UK, but they're under the European. OGEs. Oh, original English. Yeah. Old English. Old English. <laughs> I wonder if that's what... Nah, I ain't going to old English. Shout out to old English. Shout out to old with English. With an E. Man. Old with an E. Yeah, that's not the old English. That E makes that old a little bit older. Like that U in color yeah. makes it hurt more. Yeah. yeah. Even though color didn't even spell like that, but that... 
when that U is in it, it hurts a little more. Yeah, it's like, like when um, you use the ER on the back of the other thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can see that. All right. Let's get into it, y'all. We jumped in this Game of Thrones. Um, We're recasting it. All black people. For the culture. Like, think about it like if Game of Thrones was Hamilton. Mm-hmm. That's what we're doing right here. Now, we'll let you know. And it's, we, gen, it's not gender specific within these people, too. No. So don't think of it. And sometimes some people won't match up people. So, for instance, we won't have uh, someone, if we name someone as Ned, the person that they're dating will I, I, I be Yeah, it's not going to make it. We're not doing this for crossover. Some we're of just, them are crossing over, though. There, there are, are some, but that's, but that's very few. We will yeah. let you know when that time comes along. All right, first up, I'll go out the box. Arya Stark is Andre 3000. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me. Like, three stacks went back and became just a whole different person. But the trillness wasn't sacrificed. It just became a whole different thing. I mean, he was a mini-faced man for a while there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and he, and he was able to update himself, and you don't see him as much, you don't talk as much, and he's kind of just there. Yeah, um, I mean, it makes it makes all the sense in the world to me. Um Let's do a little bit deeper dive. I want to save some of the big hitters for later mm-hmm. on. So I'm gonna yeah, go we just want to start people out a little bit. Good. The deeper dive. Um, so we're going to go back in time a little bit beforehand because, you know, all of this stuff happened. It started because of things that happened off screen. This like, kid is almost 10 years old now since that show came out. Yeah, no kidding. So <laughs> we had to, you know, it's like you, you had to, like, know what was going on. So I'm going to go back to the Mad King. Mm-hmm. And we decided that the Mad King is going to be 50 Cent. <laughs> None other than 50 <laughs> Cent himself. Now, the Mad King was King Aerys Targaryen mm-hmm. II. Who was he burned people with the wildflower with wildfire? No, no, no. He was planning to. Oh, yeah. He Jamie, was Jamie, to, Jamie right. jammed him up before he got it done. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Jamie jammed him up. He was the one that was screaming, burn them all. Yep. In the hall. And then Jamie. Jamie jammed him up before he could get it all the way out. Yeah. It, Actually, it, it, Jamie might have been the one that had to go tell everybody else and so jammed him up. So the thing about it is we looked at that as being 50 Cent, because we're like, yo, 50 is it's like the Mad King had social media, it would look a lot like 50 Cent going on. <laughs> 50 Cent is on there. Shout out to uh, Tierra Marita who made a song to 50 Cent recently because, you know, he's been harassed. Uh, I don't even know if it's harassment. What is a level above harassment? Um, that's called stalking and kidnapping. It's got to be something above that even. This Murder. is what 50 Cent, oh, not without putting your hands on somebody. What is Crime it? of passion? I don't well, know. No, 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 because 50 Cent is literally every day he put post pictures of random stuff. And puts tier tax Tierra Marie be like, bitch, I want my money. Because she, you know, she's trying to sue him and said that she was slanderous and when she got caught on that sex tape. She was she got slandered. She claimed it. But she says that that was slandered. Right. And cause he was making fun of her for getting caught on the sex tape. And it was saying that it was porn because it was like revenge porn because she's but then they found out she put it out herself. 50 returned Hold fire. Up. Did she? That's what that's what they claim, yeah. So she dropped it herself trying to get the trying to get the rub. Right. And then fifty turned around and sued her for like a hundred and fifty thousand and won. What? So that's why fifty is always every day or every other day is on there like, bitch, I want my money. Literally those are the posts, like every other day. And like he'll make little funny memes with him and stuff and like take her, take her picture and put him on things, like and he's deliberately every day. So that's what I'm saying, like, I don't know what levels above like stalking. Harassment. That's prime petty. That's like as petty as you can possibly get. <laughs> like the Mad King, yeah. who who had uh who burned up uh Ned Stark's father and Brandon Stark choked himself to death trying to get to his father because yeah. he had his ne- his neck uh set up on a uh on a um a, a collar and he was strangling himself on the collar. And Mad King, man. He's the Mad King. Yeah. Um it's real I don't think that I mean even though, I mean, it, it was a struggle for us with that one, honestly, to, to choose him as the definitive Mad King. I don't, I don't have as much about the Mad King as I could. Like, DMX could be the Mad King. I mean, like, just completely, like, what's going on here? What's wrong with you? Like, why are you doing these things? Like, yeah. DMX is just as easy, but I don't need the 50 to be a part of this. Like, I felt like it would be incomplete if 50 wasn't a part of it. Even though I feel like 50 has some logic to the stuff he does. You know, he's he's a troll. And yeah. you know what he's here to do. Like, so, I mean, and he's, he's very good at his trolling. So, you know what it's all about. But it's speaking of... And speaking of the King Slayer, if we're going to talk about Jamie Lannister, we might as well talk about another king. Because, in my mind at least, man, Jamie Lannister is LeBron James, dog. At the very least. Why, why do you say he's the fool? Why do you say that? Because, man, like, they road has been the same. Like, Jamie Lannister is the chosen one, right? Like, he grew up, you know, with all the nice things. Like, LeBron didn't have that, but I'm just talking about his basketball <laughs> career. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so LeBron was already that guy. 
you know, he showed up to the league. People was like, yo, unmatched hype. Still, even with Zion coming out, the hype ain't nowhere close to what it was for LeBron showing up. You know, so he got all this hype and all that. But then, boom, you get stuck with the Cavs. You think you're going to turn that around. And guess what? You got your hand chopped off, bro. You got to get out of here. You got to go on a redemptive journey. So, you know, you go and do all them things. And you end up with the heat. You're in a better place. Life seems sweet. So you're saying having um, uh, Daniel Marshall got his hand chopped off? You're having Daniel Marshall <laughs> and Eric Snow. And when they said, we're going to go upgrade the team. And they went and got Anton Jameson. That was when that was the moment LeBron got his hand cut off in Cleveland. <laughs> okay. They said, we're going to go do some big things. They got Amari Stoudemire and Anton Jameson. And I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Wait a minute. Amari Stoudemire never actually went there. No, they were going to go get him. Yeah, it was Amari right. Stoudemire, and they went and instead. They ended up with Shaq and Anton Jameson. And I was like, that ain't what, what it really what, is, yeah, bro. Yeah. So he got, his hand, he got his hand cut off by Cleveland, went down to Miami, got his swag back, got his little golden hand, which was his rings, essentially. <laughs> and, then he, uh, and then after that, he decides there's nothing more for me to do here. He comes back home. Again, he's the, he's the, he's the, the man on Castle Rock. Mm-hmm. He gets a brand new Valerian steel sword. You know, you feel like Jamie's on top again. But then, boom, things go wrong. Cersei's the queen. You went and sent off and let her daughter die. You didn't get there in time. You're in bad graces, right? So now you head out into the world on another adventure, which is called the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> and now we still don't know how that's going to work out. Because you're outside the wall. We don't even know where you at. Now. Exactly. Now, you almost got ate by a dragon trying to take out Daenerys. But then your homeboy Braun came and saved you. Like, it's been an up and down trip, even though Jamie has been, you know, a big name in these streets like Braun has. It ain't always been smooth sailing. So, Jamie Lannister is LeBron James, as far as I'm concerned. All right. Uh, I'm, let's go into Braun since you mentioned him, man. Um, I want this to be two people now. I'm going I'm to I'm you, you go ahead and announce who, you, who we had originally is Braun. I'm going to give you. Who it really may be. Well, for me, Bron is the apex predator of Game of Thrones, yeah. nearly with the exception of, like, the Night King, who we'll get on that later uh, as we head north. But for me, Bron is Jimmy Butler. Because Jimmy Butler is only in this for a few things. Jimmy Butler is in it for coins and for a little bit of shine. He ain't happy staying in one place. He's not sticking with one side. The loyalty ain't something you necessarily have to, like, be waiting on Jimmy Butler to come away with. And that's how it plays out with Bron. Bron is still a simple man. He's like, if you want to make me a knight, sure, whatever. I don't care about none of that. Do I get to get a castle? Do I get a castle? Do I get some women? And are you going to pay me? Which, essentially, his values are the same as Jimmy Butler. So that's, he's the apex predator, Jimmy Butler. I was going to say Damon Jones. I thought about this as you were talking about the Cleveland Cavaliers. Because mm. <laughs> he, 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 keep in mind, and I, I believe Bron is older. Damon Jones and James Jones. Both. Together. Yeah, because they both made careers and they lives off of that. Mm-hmm. Became sirs. Mm-hmm. Not Damon Jones was commentating on uh, NBA uh, breaking stuff. And yeah. I'm like, when did that happen? It pays to be lined up with, with dope people, right? So shout out to Jimmy Butler and Damon Jones, our bronze. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, man, I, I'm going to dive even a little bit deeper, though, for uh, for people. Um, the Brotherhood Without Banners. Mm-hmm. Dipset. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> they just walk in the countryside on their own stuff. They, they, I mean, they own their own thing. Yeah. They wear their own clothes. Yeah. They got their own way of doing things. They literally run their own life. <laughs> And they really don't have nobody necessarily are fighting. No. It's kind of like anybody that kind of just comes around. Yeah. Like. Whoever we come across that isn't in compliance, we, we take it off. And that's what Dipset was. That's exactly what Dipset <laughs> has done for years now. <laughs> with, no, with no worries and no problems at all about it. And mentioning Dipset, um, Barak Donurian, which is the brother that keeps on coming back to life. Uh-huh. We're going to make that camera on. Okay. Cameron continues to come back to life yeah. in his career. Yeah. He's had multiple careers. And people still love him. I do. I'm right here. Like I'm saying they like do people love Cam. But he wanna constantly just run around the men of banners. He could have been switched his career over like to acting or something like that. Nah, he wanna run around with other cats from the Brotherhood of Banners and just fuck with people. Mm-hmm. That's all he wants to do. Just bring me back to life and let me fuck with people. This is nothing to fuck with people and just keep it moving. Yeah, he just wants his relevancy sticks around with being the fact that I'm just going to just jones people into the ground right. every once in a while. <laughs> uh, mention another person from the Brotherhood of with, Without Banners. Um, I've had him pull it up here. You talking about Thoros Samir? Thoros Samir. That is the great Jim Jones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Jim Jones, we kept that actually within the family. We was like, we can't split them up. Nah, keep them, keep them where they need to keep be. Keep them at. where they need to be, man. Uh, Rest in peace. Yeah, he's always here. got Cam back. Sometimes he acts disgruntled with the Cam, just like Jim Jones does. You know, it's a whole thing of like, you know, he helps he helped Cam resurrect his career a couple of times himself, but his career never came up to the same, uh, you know, level as Cam's. You know, and it is what it is with him, man. He went on his own for a while before that. Yeah. yeah. So let's hit these. Uh, I'm gonna hit the. Let's hit a couple of the. Uh, couple yeah, of the families that are that, like in the area here. Mm-hmm. So let's start with the. Uh, let's start south and move north, because we know the threat that looms eventually at the end of all this. If you've been listening to this show, <laughs> you already know who it is. You know where this is all gonna end up. Where the battle is gonna come down to. But let's hit. So let's go south and let's go to what's further south, Dorn or uh, Dorn is the south. Most Dorn south. is the furthest south, right? <laughs> So who do we got here? Who do we got here in in, in Dorn? Um, bu- 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 I don't know. Just throw one of them uh, out there. We got a ton of them. Sand snakes. Okay. I mean, if anything's been more clear to me in life, it's who the sand snakes are in this version of Game of Thrones. <laughs> and just to remind you, who the sand snakes? That's the family that came. It's the family that came from um, from who Dorn. Who has three people in their family? Exactly. Exactly. So this is uh this is over in Tyrell's not uh, over in um. Not Tyrell. Martell. Martell. Yeah. Like the drink. Like the drink. Mm-hmm. So, uh. <laughs> it's like that's, how the, so, that's how I remember his name. Yeah. Mr. Park. It's the Martells and all the folks down in Dorn. You know, the only people with a little bit of color on them in Westeros, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. which stays true to get closer to the equator. You get yep. a couple people with a little color on them. And these people look, they look like they may have been cast directly for these characters. But the Sand Snakes are the Kardashians, man. And Ellery Sand is Chris Jenner. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't think it's nothing else. I don't think there's anything that's clearer in life than that. Like, you could have a couple more sand snakes for the younger ones, you know, the for, for Kendall and Kylie. Oh yeah, I mean, but you know, but he you had a whole bunch in the books. He had like eight girls. Exactly. So I mean, you got so you Courtney, you like, got Courtney, you got Kim, and you got uh, Chloe, and those are all the most beautiful women in the world. Oh no, if you if they, I mean, that's what they called yeah they sell, yeah, and they took a tough tough L in the end. Some real tough L's in the end. Um, but you know, I think that the most important thing is to dive into Chris Jenner here, because Chris yeah. Jenner is definitely hilarious. Yeah, saying. orchestrating stuff, moving the pill, moving it around, making sure this still keep going. Mm-hmm. Super loyal to the name. Like just she loyal to the name of Martell. Yeah, more than she is loyal to the, anybody else. She's she, loyal to the name Martell. She's more loyal to Martell than you are to those Monaco's. You damn right. She's and that's very, a lot of loyalty because you. Very loyal. How many Monaco's you drank this week? One. You have like a garage full of these things, don't you? Because no, I've never no. seen them anywhere else. No, no, no. I bought two cases though at the liquor store down the street. Are you brewing Monaco up? No, 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 no. I wish like, I could. like in the house. No, I'm not doing that. It'd be dope if I did. <laughs> Start making your own liquor. Yeah, exactly. that's like a pastime for when you're like 57 it's years old. Liquor. Like you just like I don't have anything else to do when you I get off. Figure out how to do. Just try to do uh, vodka. I've been getting complained at for 30 <laughs> years in my own house. Let me just start making some corn whiskey. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna put my eyes out. So if we're gonna sit there and talk about uh, the the Martells, though, I think it's time to touch on Oberlin Martell, yeah. the the Red Viper, yeah. who had a tough loss in the time he came to King's Landing. But you 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 t- yeah. you take this uh, one, uh, Mr. Dame Dash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talked a lot of shit, mm-hmm. but he was flat. But he was he was he was right about a lot of it. Yeah, just you just talk a little bit shit, just a little bit too long. He just picked the wrong time to talk his shit. And then in the, the company, everything that he worked for got pulled that rug pulled up in front of him. And we ain't, we ain't seen him since. I mean, we've seen him since, but it ain't been the same Dane. The yeah, thing we true. got is a watered down dead Dane. Yeah, it's it's a you left the, you left the ice in your soda too long, Dane. Dude, I wish kid, it's kids. But that don't but know he did how, go how to he, Dane was. Though. But he did go to that concert and, and and request his bread with no concerns. He did that a lot of times. Yeah, but I'm saying, but kids now don't even know how big Dane was and how much Dane moved the culture or whatnot. And that's why I said he's over in Martell, man. They'll learn. You gotta learn about him at some point. He's part of the masters class, right? Yeah, definitely. I hope. Well, if we're gonna talk about them, then we might as well go ahead and hit the man that brought over the Martell's days to a close, and that would be one. What's the mountain's real name? Gregor Gregor Kagan. Gregor Kagan. What is he? Actually, I didn't put him on here. Oh man. Well, for me, Gregor Kagan is Suge Knight. For me. Because he was about pure mayhem. He wasn't listening to nobody else. And he was shaking things up constantly. I, was, I wouldn't say Charles Oakley. 
<laughs> he, uh, shout out to him who just still got at, wrote in the athletic and spot somebody they didn't want to see. He hasn't been in the league since 2003. Charles Oakley. You know, 3% of the players voted that they, they didn't want to see him. Like, who who are you scared of the most in the league? Like, now? Yes. Yeah, if he was in the league right now, he would get... No, I'm talking about, they talking about right now. Like I know, if Oakley was Ryan in the league Artesia right now. Ryan Artesia 1.9. I believe it. There's no G's in the league now. There's, yeah, a couple, there's a couple goons, but there's no G's. Yeah. yeah. Like, Stephen Adams is a goon. James Johnson won. James Johnson is definitely a goon. He won, and then uh, Adams was next. Yeah, I saw that. I saw yeah, that. Oh, you you saw got, the, you saw he, I saw what you're talking yeah. about, yeah. But, I mean, there's that cast. There's got cats like Boogie. You got, Boogie's more like that KG-type gangster, though. Yeah. Even though, no, I think Boogie puts my hands on you compared yeah, to KG. Yeah, I think Boogie, but Boogie's got a little bit more to lose, though, than those other cats. True, true. You know, actually, those cats have way more to lose because they only got a – they working on 10-day contracts. Like, James Johnson came from the, from the D-League. True. So, I mean, he can't go back. Yeah, yeah. So he may not put no hands on him. Yeah, the boogie got a couple of nice contracts. So you might think it might be worth it. While we down south too, let's just go ahead and head over to the uh, to my guys, the the uh, the, the guys who ride the horses. This is the name the Dothraki. The Dothraki. Thank you. Um, and Cal Drogo, man. I mean, I feel like this is a natural thing. Cal Drogo didn't speak English. He was purely about that action, but mm-hmm. his heart opened up. He learned to love by the time it was said and done. Said and all said and done. Um, it's the Rock, man. I mean, can't the Rock. It's just basically the Scorpion King rehash. It's like and is it all the Malvias? Is the the North Rockies? Yeah, it's just all the it's all the Samoan wrestlers. That's what I'm saying. All of them, the Usos, everybody. Right? Usos, all of them. Like it's just all the Dothraki are just the eight thousand Samoan wrestlers that are all related to the Rock somehow. Mentioned in wrestling, uh, one of our listeners, because uh, one of our listeners asked. And, uh, in versus Twitter, how do you feel about Kofi Kingston winning the belt? Oh man, shout out to Kofi Kofi Kingston. That's an awesome win. Some win for the coach. How big he, uh, he was asking the uh, how big is that him winning in the pantheon of black champions? You feel well? Like? I, I mean, I guess you this, see how long he got the title. And, yeah, let's see what this run is all about. But I think the fact that he got the push behind him and he got up and got a chance to even have that you know that moment is huge. I was reading it for he's the first black person to win the title at WrestleMania. No, that's not true. They said he's the first black person to win the title. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because when The Rock beat he Steve Austin, it. when The Rock beat Steve Austin, it wasn't for the belt. Yeah. It, but he's the first black person to win the actual well, title. Hey, man, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. I'm always about that. That's the biggest <clears throat> stage. That's the biggest stage to do it on, man. And Kofi done paid his dues. I always love to see people pay yeah. their dues and get the and get the rub. I mean, from what I can count, I think he's the fourth black world champion in the WWE. So, you know, it, it's, it's dope to see that. Mark Henry, Booker T, and The Rock all have been world champions. But I mean, it's always amazing to see that whole thing. So Ron Simmons was over in WCW, WCW. yeah, NWO, in NWA. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you have other people that won titles. I think Junkyard Dog won a title down south. You know, what I mean, so I mean, you got winning that world title. But the but the the, the the big the big title up north. Yeah, that's a, Bobby so, Lashley have had it. No, no. Okay. And I think he had the Intercontinental once. Oh, he's the ECW champion. I think. Yeah, he, he did. He did get that. Yeah, he did get that. Um. But yeah, 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 yeah. So shout out to the Rock, man, and uh, for being the uh, for being the king of the Doth, the, the the call of the Doth, of the Dothraki. <laughs> it's a lot of words in that goddamn thing. Um, let's see what else we got down here. Let's hit a few of the lower people here, so mm-hmm. we can move on to some big hitters. Oh, um, we can start. Let's go out east, man. Uh, the sons of the harpy. Mm-hmm. Those are all the littles, Lil Zan. <laughs> little, um, uh, little scrappy, uh, and little scrappy's I age, man. But I mean, you know, he was in the early. He's just scrappy now, though. He, he was in the early run of the littles. Yeah, but I mean, we talking about the little skies, uh, little yachty, um, little rainbow. Little, little they got. Sh- Is that a rapper? I know probably. it's a drink, but it's probably it's a whole bunch. All the littles and all the YBNs and all them guys. Mm-hmm. Those are all the uh, sons of Harpy. Okay. You don't know who they are because they all are indescribably different. They're, they're indistinguishably different from each other. You don't know the difference between all the members. Okay. Got that. We got that. So while we're talking about them, we might as well hit the gold company, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the gold company, who's the gold company was who? The Wu-Tang Clan. But who were they on the show? Oh, oh, the gold company is the people that um, Cersei right now is sending all for to get come down and try to basically mercenaries that don't lose it. They don't quit on a job type thing. They, exactly. They like the 18, but like a big ass... Uh, army of them. They yeah. don't lose. They don't go home until the job is done. Yeah, until everybody's dead or the job is done. Yeah. One way or the other. So but sh- they don't mess around with their payments either. And I don't know how long Cersei bread is for them. Just, so there's a chance that Cersei could be bringing her own demise to the bay. Because she ain't got them bread. Because that bread is not coming. No. 
And if and if Danny and one of them like, how about because they're they're former Targaryens. A lot of them are half bastard Targaryens. Mm-hmm. So if somebody like Daenerys come around and say, "Yo, have we seen them on the show yet?" No, mm. no, no. They also have uh, legendarily wise, they have the only other Valerian steel sword. No, okay. that because uh, it's called bitter, bitter, bitter sweet, bitter sweet or bitter, bitter uh, blade or something like that. Okay. And he is one of them has it, and it's been passed down. Probably. I like bitters in my Manhattan. <laughs> I prefer that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So that shout out to the Wu Tang Clan, who was the Gold Company, uh, holding it down for us on that side. Uh, ran by the great RZA, uh, as the man. I could see the Wu Tang Clan hopping in a boat and, and heading on down to collect some bread. Yeah. Who do you? Exactly. We're on the way down. You think somebody's ever sent the Wu Tang Clan out on a promotional thing for a concert? Yeah. Wu Tang Clan look like they'll still put some flyers on your car. Yeah, at, yeah. Le- at least you got street would. team is think about it. This think about this: if every one of those people have at least three friends that are not friends with other people, that's twenty-seven people that are rolling with y'all minimum at all times. Right, exactly, exactly. Because all nine people are not all friends with the same other people. Mm-hmm. Three other people, but oh man, I'm gonna get Chris, Allah, Allah, Rahim, and Power. All three of them rolling with me. Yeah, and then you know some other Wu Tang Clan names. Are I just felt like the Wu Tang Clan just created people along the way. Like I just thought that every time I saw the Wu Tang Clan, it was a different dude I'd never seen before. Like I just thought I thought like the Wu Tang I thought the Wu Tang Clan was like was like at least seventy five deep when I was coming up. They gotta be. They are. Like you, they had a whole the whole company Wu Wear. They employed all them people. And yeah. So I mean, they on the way to King's Landing. Wu Tang Clan. If 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 a boat Don't full of go company, see what happens. If a boat full of brothers hopped off. In King's Landing this season, I would probably fall on the floor and die. Dude, that that that'd be perfect though to a certain extent. Like a boat full of brothers. I might showed have to up. stop watching for weeks just for I can not for I can keep watching at one point and not like and binge it. After I see some black guys jump off, I gotta check out for a few weeks yeah. to get myself together. Yeah, that would be it for me. All right, so uh, let's just wrap it up while we're down at the Iron Bank. Who we're talking about that money? Mm-hmm. The Iron Bank. All them Harlem drug dealers. All the Harlem drug dealers <laughs> from that link all, all from, of from the link that we sent you. <laughs> about the story of hip hop in Harlem, <laughs> all of them cats are the and Iron we Bank. We can go farther than that. We can go back to the Nicky Barneses and mm-hmm. the uh, um, Bumpy, 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 and all them cats, yeah. man. We can, if you want to go farther back, them cats always had a bank up mm-hmm. there. Yeah. They had a bank for you, and and they don't let them come back and collect. Don't let them come and collect. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't don't bother them with that. So now we're starting to move further north. Now we're starting to get to some different characters and some things like that. Let's slide over to speaking of Targaryens. Let's just let's just go ahead and do it. Let's get to the Mother of Dragons, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, do we want to do that now? or Do we want to save that no, one for we later? Go, we we just flowing, so we kind of. All right, man. All right, you know what? You let's go with no. Let let's hold off on her. Okay. First, because that's going to be. Brother. A... Let's go with her brother first. Uh, did we put her brother in Varys? The series, yeah. Uh, yeah, Viserys. Uh, yeah, because I mean that's still kind of the story of the calls yeah. and the, the Dothraki. Uh, Kyrie Irving, you said. Yeah, man. Kyrie Irving got to be Viserys, man, because Kyrie, for his entire career, has been screaming about how he want to be the man and how it's going to come to him. He was so upset when LeBron came back to Cleveland because it took his team away that he left to go to Boston, which ended up not being his team either, and now he's mad again and want to go somewhere else. Because <laughs> he's the rightful king, and he should be the number one option. Nah, dog. You just need to realize it's, that sometimes there's no shame in being number two. Viserys didn't get that, and he got a pot of gold poured on his head, son. He got the ultra Al Green yeah. treatment. Ultra one. Yeah. Uh, next up, Barristan Selmy. Mm-hmm. The great Big Daddy Kane. He's an old school player. <laughs> Been doing this a long time. Barristan Sel- the thing we got to remember. Here's the thing to remember, though. Most people don't know people's names on Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. Barristan so every time we say somebody, we, we have to describe who it is. Barristan Selmy was... Uh, Daenerys is like number one bodyguard, the only general. He was the one that got thrown out of King's Landing for, for for still believing in the the, the kingdom of um, the Targaryens being able to be running. It. Right, he still believe that a Targaryen should be on the throne. Yeah, and they got rid of him when they got when they threw Ned Stark into captivity. Right, and so then she, he got a, got out of there and went and found Daenerys. Right, and started working up under her tutelage. Right, then got he got murked out by but it murked out like fifty of them. Sons, sons of Harpy and Lulz. After he took a couple of them out, though. Right. Well past you, his prime. And you see that's what happened with Dick Daddy Kane. Yeah. Just all the littles. Just yeah. over shouting them. Just over, just over the amount of them. Just yeah. All the littles. Yeah. 
Yeah, he. Too much for the the great great fathers of hip hop, the littles, the <laughs> sons of hard. It was a different. It was a different era, yeah, and it, and it, it came to get him. Uh, speaking of which, uh, let's stay in King's Landing for a second before we ride out. Let's go to Maester Pycelle. Yes, sir. Oh, Maester Pycelle. Uh, Russell Simmons, man. Maester Pycelle was the was the corrupt old head that was the the lead counsel on medicine affairs and things like that. And he's a priest from. Um, old, not, not, not Old Town. Uh, from where the uh, the main keep is, where they keep all the records and stuff. That's who, yeah, that, he's basically like a priest from the Vatican. They send out to every different region, and he's the one for there. But he moved up to be on the council. Right, right. So he's Russell Simmons because Russell Simmons has been through a lot, man. He's uh, looking real, real creepy, but he's got a gang of knowledge, and he's gonna be sitting on the board of all this money and understanding of what's going on. But he look, it looks real, real creepy right now. And there was scenes, you know, where he was. Sitting in the bed with like what four or five young ladies and all that kind of stuff. Mm-mm. Yeah, it was a lot going on with, uh, with brother Russell Simmons, and we haven't seen him. We, as just like uh, Mister Pricell, we haven't seen him. Either. Yeah, he got murked out, but still, we haven't seen. Him. Yeah, yeah, he got he uh, he was part of the the big sweep. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> that that, 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 uh, that straight up uh, uh, castration of uh, King's Landing. And speaking of people that got <laughs> swept up out of King, King, a castration of King's Landing, I thought you were going to go somewhere else. When I, I was trying to throw you the wait, wait what was? Oh, I, yeah, that's where I was at. Okay, that's where okay. I was at. So, there's only n- that next, it's the Unsullied. Well, I thought you were going to go to the other person on the council. Who? Beers. Oh, good call. Take it. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> I don't think about him as down there anymore. I looked at him as a different part of the story. Okay, yeah. I was going to get to so him later. Beers is Wendy Williams. Beers is the eunuch. Yeah. He's the one who basically got his stuff cut yeah, off, no. and now he's the spy master. Right. But he has spies everywhere. Knew everything. Wendy Williams had all the dish, mm-hmm. the sweets. Now she lost all her birds. Her husband had a baby with his side chick for ten years. Wait, when I don't feel like that's I've known. Last couple of weeks. Yeah, that's why. That's why he put her as Varys. She having a tough run. Yeah, she just had like a couple of break. She took another break from her show after after a break. How you can't take a break from a break. <laughs> You just was off like Ooh, two. Oh Lord, I'm not on enough vacation. I gotta yeah, take a little so more. Her, her husband had a baby with his side chick, but he been messing with her like ten years. That was his second family. He was just she doing. She just had a baby too, though, like a couple weeks ago. That's why she's having this breakdown. He was just doing it like people granddaddies used to do when and they got, got that other family around the corner. Back in the day, she would have had the little birds. They would have told her what was up. Mm-hmm. Them but, birds ain't chirping, and Varys ain't got his birds no more. But she didn't lost the juice, nah. Lost all of it, man. So that's why Varys is the great Wendy Williams. Well, that's 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 fair. That's thing I could actually see her dressed in that fit too. Oh yeah. Which is, uh, you know, hey, whatever, get you, float, float your boat, whatever floats your boat. Well, so we're talking about people that have that affliction mm-hmm. as well. Let's talk about some. You know what? No, nah, we can save, we can save them for when it is that we, to paint the full picture of what Daenerys, of what West Westeros is Daenerys <laughs> is 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 it's looking like with. South Central Westeros that we got going on here. Uh, let's go to the Tyrells. Okay. Let's go to the Tyrells. Then again, the Tyrells were the family that was trying to marry in with the Baratheons, with the Lannisters to get the power yeah, down at King's mean, Landing. They really, really weren't necessarily like. Um, I, I don't even think they were their their their. Um, it didn't work out well. Yeah, either way I don't think they it. were even their um, not rivals. Um, the ones that uh, they weren't they weren't really aligned with the uh, Lannisters pre-war they just did it because it was like they was the only one kind of left out there and he was like y'all want to kind of be down i mean they was on some get down or lay down type stuff yeah. so yeah they were 100 percent with it um so yeah so anyway so tyrells you took care of this one so i'm gonna leave this one to you to, to, to jump into this all right um, um so marjorie tyrell is amber rose yes absolutely um, Kind of bounced around, moved on up. Regardless of regardless of whoever was in the chairs, who she was on. Right. And, and say what you want about Amber Rose. She does have her own talent, but she did use them situations or at opportunity as well. Same thing with uh, Marjorie Tyrell. She was stupid intelligent, but she knew how to, how to, how to make them moves or to better move her way up through, the, mm-hmm. through this uh, place called Westeros. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that Same thing for this one in West Westeros. Yep. Um, so then next up we have the great Olena Tyrell, her grandmother, and I think that's Jennifer Jones of the great um Blackish fame mm-hmm. and a, a lot of other films and St. Louis. St. Louis from St. Louis from Kenlock. Um every bit of Kenlock too. Oh yeah, you could tell she's so Kenlock, yeah. yeah. Like mm. um 
that she's on uh, was on Different World too back in the day. Yeah, I know that's years. crazy that yeah. like it's been like that long. And then the final Tyrell we have here is Loris Tyrell, who was a bit eccentric to put it in mm-hmm. the best way that we possibly can, but had talents. Had skills, could he could do the job? And, and, and was messing with Cersei for a long time. And, and was trying to get, yeah, was trying to get on along with Cersei. Mm-hmm. Didn't necessarily work out for him in that because <laughs> she wasn't choosing up at all yeah. at that time. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and call that Odell Beckham Jr., Ooh. a brother who's a little flamboyant, a little uh, charismatic. Let's say that flamboyant is a, is, a, a, is, a is an assault level Ooh. word. He's a charismatic brother, but he's got a lot of talent. And Loris Tyrell could swing the sword until they locked mm-hmm. him away. And he got it. He caught them flames too. And seriously, he got rid of everybody. He became the um, the uh, the part of the uh, bro- what was it? The 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 the, 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 the sparrows. Yeah, and all that stuff. Called, they were called something. I don't know. Something. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Uh, what was the bigger kill scene? Cersei blowing up the sept or Michael Corleone taking out his enemies? The sept, man. The sept was crazy, dude. And it was like cause everybody was in that bad boy. Mm-hmm. Like it was like. It was, nu- it was nuclear, dog. Yeah, and he took it to got almost ca- half of King's Landing, too. Right. Like, fuck it. I still got the power, though. 50 Cent. Um, let's hit a couple of uh, let's hit a couple of people before we start heading north here. Now, I want to hit a couple more people here. Uh, Tom and Baratheon, who took over for his brother Joffrey, who we'll get on here in a couple of minutes here. Um, Tom and Baratheon is 21 Savage. <laughs> And we made that a direct connection to with Hammer Rose. Mm-hmm. He just wanted to be down with somebody fine. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm was the like, king now. I'm number one. Tom was like, I'm just gonna use this. I'm gonna use these abilities, and I'm just gonna take all this privilege and do what I need to do with it. And until the wheels fall off. Yeah, I'm uh, in love with her. Too. Until I, until everything catches up with me. And he's sitting out there with, with, like you know, still trying to get her and having a bouquet of flowers. Yo, only thing about Tom and though is that Tom and bitched up a little bit though, because Tom wouldn't go get his. He wouldn't put his put his hand down, put the fist down on the king. And Jamie tried to tell him, "You're the king. You don't Tom's have to answer to anybody." Was neither they were saying like she broke up with him. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, that's the <laughs> that's the. I mean, brothers get broke up with, but yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it happens every day. It happens every day. But uh, yeah, so we got that, and um, who we got next here? Uh, we got who's the other guy? Quiburn. That's your guy. Quiburn um, is the crooked maester, the one that's one that's. Bringing people back to life and downstairs and only wor- and working steadily with, um, with Cersei and that is Ben Carson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ben Carson doing inside dirty work, betraying the people, <laughs> going against the cause. Oh, just sitting yeah. there like, yeah, we finna do it. Yeah, yeah, that's Ben Carson all day. Just imagine Ben Carson in that little black robe, down there in his little lab, finding ways to betray black people even <laughs> further. It's probably what he's doing right now while we're recording this. Shout out to you, Ben Carson, you you inside worker. Uh, who else we got here that's down south? Down south. Um, before we start going up north. Yeah. All right, man. Let's do this. The High Sparrow. High Sparrow, man. This one's going to be uh, the great Cruffo Dollar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Making you think it's something spiritual, but he getting that paper or getting that power from you. Shout out to Creflo, get your thing. Condemning you. Condemning you at every turn. Giving you a little bit of that shame in case he's you ain't got he, enough right now. Why he need a brand new horse? Yeah, but, so you know, I mean, in this it's case, a, he said he needed a brand new planes. So it's a uh, you know it's a thing get you get you jammed up and he'll jam you up and then leave you out there to deal with it yourself. So all right, let's start moving up to, up north to uh, north northwest Westeros. Mm-hmm. And start hitting a couple of people along the road on the way up that way. Let's see. Who can we hit next? Who can we stop through next? Uh, let's, let's, well, I'm going to save him. for. Th- I'm going to save the, the, the other Baratheon for later. Um, actually, let's hit the whole Baratheon clan right now. Let's just do the whole thing. So let's start off with Robert Baratheon, the dispatched king of Westeros. Jermaine Jackson? Not Jermaine Jackson. No, Jackson. It's, no, that's Stannis you're talking about. Stan- oh, Robert, Robert Baratheon, Baratheon is notorious B.I.G. Yeah, man. Overzealous a little bit with where he thought he was and then got caught slipping and he was taken out and everything continued to stay in disarray from another person that we're going to have named mm-hmm. him dying, put all of Westeros in disarray. Yeah, like things fell out. Like he caused the commotion and but the commotion was out. based around him, but then he died in the middle of it and it really Kicked up. got out of order. That's Robert Baratheon all day. And the person that you just mentioned, his brother, Stannis Baratheon, yep. who is absolutely Joe Jackson, <laughs> without a doubt. 
He sent his only daughter up to get burnt up because some crazy witch lady told him that, hey, this is what we own. We need this power. We need to get this, and it can only come from you and your bloodline. And he's like looking all around. Like, and he's looking around. You know what? My bloodline is the best bloodline. Let me go, go out here how much and get you, this. Remember you said how much you need. Yeah. Who, who do you need me to give up? You need Tito. You need who? Only one you can't have is Mike. Michael. Well, you can have Michael. Michael too. Depends how much. You can just burn up Michael's blackness. But we want to keep Michael the person, but you can sacrifice his blackness. I can see Joe Jackson being behind something like that and making that happen. So uh, there's a lot of lines to draw for Stannis Baratheon being Joe. Like, Stannis Baratheon, Joe Jackson ain't about no games. No. I don't think Stannis Baratheon smiled that entire show. <laughs> he zero didn't. Maybe once or twice, but that was like. Like, he was compassionate up. in waves, but he was really just about getting what was his. And even if it wasn't his, he was going to get it still, even if it was his sons and his kids. So who we got next? All right, next up. We have... Well, we got to go to Renly. Oh, Renly. We got to go to Renly next. We got to hit all these Baratheons at okay. once. Let's just get them all out the way. JoJo Simmons. Yes. Uh, if anybody remembers, JoJo Simmons had a fledgling rap career, then was also uh, snatched up for his chain and caught <laughs> on videotape. <laughs> and, the, and they also put him on videotape telling them to say that he's not hard anymore. No. That he ain't about this life. They have him on videotape, snatched up by the collar of his hoodie. Can you, can you really... I mean, Renly did get killed by a shadow ghost that got sent from Joe Jackson. Yeah, so I mean, Joe Jackson killed JoJo Simmons with a shadow ghost that looked like him. That's what these are shadow ghosts that killed his career. Damn. Damn. The power of the chain, dog. He took that chain off and turned into Melisandre. Oh, because he lost, lost all that uh, ability he had. Uh-huh. He got, he got jammed up. So speaking of that, then let's get to the red woman, Melisandre. And hey, Erica Badu. I mean, I don't know if there's any better fit. <laughs> so I'm picturing in my mind like these people as black people, like ever since we cast it, it like, would be hilarious. I don't, I can't think of a better fit than Melisandre to be Erica Badu. I mean, Erica Badu put a hex on like five rappers and like had them wearing like orange pants and like <laughs> yeah, that's real. thinking about different things. Like she changed Andre 3000's entire way of existing. Like she did something to that boy, and I think we've seen since then proof of that, proof of the pudding about how that happened. So. God bless you, three yeah. stacks. Um, next up, since we're keeping it um, a little bit, let's keep it in the um, offspring of the Baratheons. Gendry. Gendry, my man. Gendry's my guy, man, too, because yeah, Gendry's like swinging that hammer. They came back down. Davos came down there to pick him up. He was like, I've been ready to go. Let's go. I already been, I've been training for, for these last few years. I'm good to go. Let's ride. I ain't got nothing here. Um, Steph Curry. He got to be Steph Curry, dog. Like, Always you never – and, and here's the case. Here's the case for Steph Curry, man. It's just like, yes, Steph Curry is easy money sniper with the shot. Easy money sniper with the shot. Yeah. He always is ready for action. You know what I'm saying? But, but when Steph Curry blew up on the scene, like, he had been there for a minute. Like, it was like his third or fourth year. Gendry been sitting out there, too, for a minute. Yeah. that blacksmith on the line. And Gendry's a 100% bastard sitting out there, and he's like, yeah, you know, I am who I am. But then you look at Gendry, and they say, man, he looks exactly like Robert, like a young Robert. So he got a lot of spirit. He got that young Robert spirit before he before he started just drinking ale. Before Robert became a sucker for love, right, and became an, a pure alcoholic yeah. at the same time. So shout out to my man Gendry. I think Gendry gonna do some damage this year. It's gonna be a good good year for him. Oh, I just thought about the way we set up another character, and it's pro and it and it looks crazy. I just it just hit me. Uh, can I dive into it? Have fun, bro. Rhaegar Targaryen. Rhaegar. Tupac. Yeah. The legend of him yeah, has fueled everything that's in hip-hop to the, to this day going forward. Like, if Rhaegar Targaryen was really a real dude and he was black, there would be so many T-shirts of Rhaegar Targaryen out there. <laughs> yeah. And on top of that, the whole beef happens over a girl, just like with, uh, with Biggie and uh, Faith. Tupac, with Faith. Yeah. That just hit me with Liana Stark. Yeah. And shout out to Liana Stark because she's the Crispus Addicts of this world where the first shot hit her and several wars got launched over this woman. Just like Crispus Addicts stepped out the club back in 1776 or 72 or whatever, got clipped, and we said, oh, no, that's it. That's the last time that a bunch of white people rose up and fought for black people in America. It seems like a couple of people got shot after that. Though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think they said his body laid out there in the grass for a while. He was got he got recon. We'll get to recon <laughs> later. We'll get to recon later. They definitely forgot about Christmas addicts. They probably just looked like, oh. Did we shoot him? Like, damn. Was he with us or with them? 
So you so you saying that Crispus Addis got shot and they was like, oh. And then somebody else got shot and they're like, oh, hell no. 100%. Oh, man. Well, that's not Liana, but he is, Liana is the Crispus. Because yes. we don't know the other dude's name. No. Crispus Addicts yes. lives on yes. in fame because of it. Um, so so we, we, got, we got that down. Um, let's start to head out to. You go above the wall? No, 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 no. That's, that's last. That's next to last. Okay. We're going to go out to. East. A little bit east again? Let's go west. Okay. Let's go west. No, oh, you want to go to the Iron Islands? Yes. Yeah, or do you want to go yeah, west? That's right. further north, though. Yeah, but I'm saying like north is north and north. north. Well, let's go. Let's go over to the Mother Dragons. Let's go over to where she's moving over from. Okay. So let's let's get started with that. So the far east. Then. Far, far. I thought that was the west. No, it's the far east. You're right. Yeah, let's go far east. Let's go to the far east. Um, who do you want to start with on that side? Uh, let's go. Let's go with the player. The player of the times. Actually no, let's just go to the top. Let's go to the top and work our way down. So, for the for, for one of the first big reveals of of the of the day here, we gave you Arya Stark earlier on. We gave you Jamie Lannister earlier on. Jamie Lannister was LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Arya Stark was Andre Three Thousand. But let's go to probably what the second most popular character on the show. First or second? Third. Third. Okay. People love Tyrion, man. That's true. That's true. But I feel like I feel like Tyrion. I feel like there's the women vote though enjoys this side. Women love Tyrion too. Yeah, though. that's Tyrion's, true. Tyrion could be the between him and Jon Snow is neck and neck on the low. So Daenerys it's is Barack Obama, man. <laughs> the mother of us all. <laughs> the mother of dragons is the father and of black people, in bro. Just, and people just meet him and won't believe in him. Hey, Amen. She's inspired more people than anybody, with the exception of Barack. It seems like it's like John. People only believe John after he does something. Yeah, like people only John can't even talk about all the amazing stuff he's done. But Daenerys ain't got no problem showing it. <laughs> no, them dragons show up. Them dragons you show up. Everything you only have to hear the story. Exactly, and those dragons. We'll get into those dragons in a second. But you know, what I'm saying like she's riding around. She had a, she got a Joe Biden with her. You know, what I'm saying she's. <laughs> She's hitting, she's hitting the streets. You know what I'm saying? That Joe Biden, you know what? Actually, I'm going to make an audible right here. I'm going to make an audible. And we would bring one white person in because Joe Biden is about to be the next person. <laughs> yeah, so Joe Biden is about to be the delegate de la black for the next two years as everybody puts their support behind him trying to be the, uh, the hope <laughs> to take back the White House. So, in a way, the Joe Biden. Of a whole nation of people. Joe Biden's going to be the, the one brother. Who's not a brother? Who's on this side of Westeros? On West Westeros with us. What's, uh, what's y'all? So if the mother of dragons is Barack Obama, then Jorah Mormont, her advisor, is Joe Biden. <laughs> like they homies, they super close. You know, you could tell that Joe Biden kind of always wanted to hug Barack Obama in public, but he couldn't do it. Like it was like it's like, hey man, it's all good. <laughs> but later on, we can chill and like be ourselves, smoke some Black and Miles and stuff like that. And uh, drink wine, drink some ale together if you're over there and all maybe of that. It should be Davos, man. I mean, not uh, Darius and Harris, maybe. No, man, because that's a whole different thing. They're not that close. Right. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, on an advice on an advice standpoint and standing in when needs to stand up, you know, that's it. So the mother of dragons is Barack Obama. She inspires people. She's got no problem with unleashing force when she needs to. Barack Obama was very, very quick to pull the trigger with the drone attacks. <laughs> Danny Targaryen is very quick to pull the drone attacks <laughs> with the three dragons. Yeah. Like, there's a whole lot of stuff here. Danny's about equal rights. She don't really see the color in folks. She's just all about people having the opportunity. But she'll still drop them nukes. But on she'll them. still yeah. drop down and get it and, and, and end you if she needs to. And just like when Barack went and got Obama, I mean, when Barack went to go get Osama bin Laden, yeah. I should say, Danny went and got the Tarleys and got and roasted them. And didn't he get Saddam Hussein too? Yeah, he did all that. Like, he doesn't care. Like, he went to go get everybody. Yeah. So, it's like, that's the thing. Like, o- Obama was not, was not sparing anybody. We and had a Danny question mark either. at more mind. It was originally going to be Drake, but that's better. Yeah, better no. In that situation there, and then Drake. Um, we got everybody in there. Oh, let's get somebody that's still in that camp now. Uh, we debated this one pretty heavy. Tyrion, Jay-Z. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, we did that. Well, before we before we do that though, I want to hit the rest of her forces. Well, no, she's a, he's in the camp. I said. Somebody well, I guess he's the hand of the kid. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you take. Hey, yeah, Tyrion's Jay Z in my yeah. book. Uh, Jay Z. Yeah. I mean, he's he can't you can't fuck can't you get him down. He's not the most attractive, but he's always got women. People love him. People listen to him. And even when like Nas had him down, he 
was able to battle back. Every time you think you got Tyrion counted out, he's back at you. Yeah, I mean, he that's... He got out of jail from being with the Starks. Remember when they, they, they caught him slipping with that? Bron got him out of, what, two uh, different duel to the deaths, right? Yeah, like he... Oh, trial by, trial by combat. Like he's on the jig of Kelly, not guilty <laughs> tip right now. Uh, so today Z is Tyrion. So we're going to stay over there with them. Uh, All right, so we need to go to the, to the forces, though. Uh, we got to go to the forces. Sunday. We got to go to the forces, man. I was saying Masande. I was gonna go. We gonna stay in the court. Oh, I forget her name. It confuses me with the other lady. Ms. 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 Name Ms. is Ms. the Ms. same Ms. way. Yeah. Uh, so King, that's man. so she's the fine black woman on the show. Yeah. I know we don't remember who she is. But you know she's the fine one with curly hair. Yes. That messes with the great one. Yes. That's Masande, Gail King. Yeah. Like she's great support system. A hell of a support system. Gonna give you. She gonna look. Gail has basically become Oprah for Oprah, a by proxy of Oprah. Yeah, she's become like the like hand. Of, she's the hand of the queen to Oprah. Yeah, exactly. We couldn't get Oprah here, people. We really tried to too, but yeah, it, it was too easy. It was too good for Barack Obama to be. Yeah, it just makes uh, too much sense. Yeah, I mean, if you were saying runner up would be Oprah is. I mean, yeah, I mean, dang. but there's drone attacks though. Oprah's never authorized drone attacks. At least never. I don't think so. Well, she might do it. She might, might do drop it. some 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 new cars on some people or something. Well, no, the, I'm talking about probably in the industry. She ain't drop some news like you ain't doing this, you ain't doing that. Oh well, yeah, that's a real thing. That's <laughs> a real thing too. Um, and then Dario, what's the dude's name? Naharis. Da- Dario Naharis, who was uh, who was Danny's side boo thing. Until she had to go off and get a suitable person over in civilization. Who was Jay Z who ended up hating on it, saying that you shouldn't have no side dude when you get the roll up in Westeros. That's right. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Danny is really at, at the player of Game of Thrones. She's she's made her way through the entire. But if you notice, the situation with John is the first one that she naturally picked. That's true. All the other ones have been kind of orchestrated. I remember she kind of messed with Homeboy because she needed something from him. She wanted to kind of get those brotherhood. What was it, the Brotherhood of Arms that he was a part of? Yeah. She wanted to get him, get them with that and keep him on board. So it was a little bit. This is the first time she's actually made her own decision with John. Yeah, that's real. So, I mean, that's the other, that's the other guy. We and got that's LL Cool J. LL Cool J, man. You can't. I mean, he's, he's just, always there. He's attractive. He don't lose because Dehar, uh, Dehario ain't lost no battles either. No. But you forget about him. You leave him and forget how dope he was. Well, he was. People a- forget how dope he was as a fighter yeah he was a college boyfriend you know like he was somebody you wasn't gonna take home for the holidays but you know when you went back to school you was gonna have you weren't taking him in the grad school with you it was only it was only it was only at the summer your girl's like oh he kind of cute girl absolutely not yeah no you don't you don't take that uh so there's a few people that are left that are gonna be really truly be a part of the game of thrones before before we do that before we do that we're gonna turn the corner into that in a second get some of the biggest characters that you know uh gray worm and the unsullied uh, Grey Worm will be played by the part of Nas in this <laughs> yes. one, with the Unsullied being the Nation of Islam in full. <laughs> and it makes sense if you know if you get those both. Now, and this is no shot against the Nation of Islam. No, 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 no. no. We saying names because no we joke. talking about we ain't talking about how how they co- showed up. We talking about when they show up, <laughs> action is getting taken. And if you get out of line, you get put back taken. in your place. <laughs> yeah. And they, and they do stuff with no questions. None. None. No questions. We you you need to be done. Let's do it. Yeah. All Let's day. make it happen. You need us to, uh, uh, to protect your concert. We'll do it as long as it ain't no alcohol being served. We'll protect it. <laughs> right. That's one of the that's one of the stipulations. Oh, I know, I know. Um, yeah, dude, they will they will do all that stuff for you. They and they have no questions answered. They they kill you first or knock you down and ask questions later after the minister walk up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a real thing. You know, so same thing. You walk, you try to walk up on um, Danny like that. Oh no, you finna come on. You may need, you ain't even made it past you ain't even made it to where Great Worm at. It's probably casting got knocked out. We don't even know about this. Been on that way on the outside of the camp. You know what I'm saying? It's then walk by and then caught some strays, mm-hmm. some stray spears, and he was just walking his sheep. He just got too close. Yeah, you got too, you got too. <laughs> you got close. close. That Secret Service don't play that. You too close, man. Yeah. Right. Now, somebody, somebody just threw a spear without even asking a question. So I, I don't know exactly where we're at on the map right now with this one, but we gotta just mention him yeah. right now. So we gotta go to the faceless man. Himself, <laughs> Chuck and Hagar. Now, if you recall, when Arya went to He's Arya, everywhere, so I guess we, it doesn't matter where. We yeah, go. it doesn't matter where we're at. He's all places at once. But when Arya went to the uh, went to what's the name of that place that he, that that he she was went in? to jail or Roose Bolton. 
No, 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 no. Not jail. I'm talking about when she went to. Oh, you're talking about she went to where the Iron Bank is at. Um, yeah, what's the name of that place? Bravos? Bravos. When yep, she went Bravos. to Bravos. She went to Bravos, and she had a coin from a guy earlier that was just a part of. From he, he saved her a few times from. And she saved him. Yeah, from being in jail. Exactly. Which was interesting. Of like he could have saved himself. Yeah, he could have. But I think he was t- putting her to the test. Yeah. T- to try to get her into the fold. Yeah. But anyway, Jack and Hagar is going to be two chains because because two chains has been two completely different people, <laughs> and for the longest time, people did not know that they were the same one person. and the same. <laughs> And there's probably some people out there now that didn't know that, that Two was Chains titty was Titty Boy at the time. I guarantee you 50% of his fans don't even know that. Yeah, or, that they, or, or they didn't know until they went to Wikipedia. That there's no connection between them at all. At all. No. None of it. Not at all. They just, they just know I'm riding around and I'm getting it. Right. That's all they know is I'm right. riding around and I'm getting it. So Jock and Hook are the faceless man is Two Chains mm-hmm. because Two Chains has multiple faces and multiple characters that mm-hmm. he just lives his life as. Um. Let's go to the Iron Islands, man, for a second, man. Let's head up there. All right. Um, Yara Greyjoy, the, um, she was the, what, supposed to be the first queen ever of um, the Iron Islands. I'm going with Ellen. Mm. Ellen DeGeneres is Ellen the queen DeGeneres. of the Iron Islands. Dude, she runs it, man. She does. Uh, shout out to my boy, Nell, man. Uh, he went on Ellen, and he said that they tell you before he was on the show with his wife, and... They tell you don't look into her eyes because her eyes are too beautiful and you'll get caught up in them. He said they tell you that before you go on stage. Wow. And he said, I did. He said, I did. He said, if you watch me, I got caught up because her eyes are beautiful. <laughs> and so Ellen was walking in, dropping that game on these chicks. Dude, no, he was like, he was. He said, he said, he said the uh, the lower action lines of him wanted to be like, hey, what's popping, Ellen? <laughs> it's not going to work. Right, I know, but he, he knew that, but he said like her eyes are so beautiful yeah. and they captivate you. He was like, I kind of want, I almost threw caution to the wind and just yeah. said it. You shoot your shot. I mean, you know, you're going to miss. It's going to rim out. It yeah. might just air out. It might and just Ellen shoot don't play that shit either, though, man. She's been a ground fighter for everything that's going on. Yeah, Ellen don't play no you games. Know, she don't play no games like a girl, you are a Greyjoy either, man. So, also, but while we're going to deal with the, be, with the Greyjoys, let's go over to Bayline Greyjoy, her father, who got thrown off of a bridge and who was a rather salty cat, to say the least. Um, he's Rich Porter. Yeah. And, and this is for all the people. We went back, go back to the Harlem people. Rich Porter was somebody that was dull, flossing. And remember when he came back from jail, he was a little bit salty, but he still was the man. And then his brother, Euron Greyjoy, came, took his all his bricks, yeah. and killed him. Yeah, and 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 was even stunned even harder than any. He might stunt harder than anybody on that entire show. Oh, you're on. Uh, uh, I'm talking about you're on. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, I don't think anybody they stunts even, like in the him. books, man. He even stunts even harder in the books. He got like purple hair and stuff. Yes. Yeah, like he he's a f- full on stunner. Yeah, and because of that, the role of Euron Greyjoy in this universe will be played by none other than Floyd Mayweather Jr. <laughs> we wanted to, we at first we wanted to keep it in continuity and put it his uh, uh, his alpo. But we couldn't do it. No. Because Floyd Mayweather has to be this. Situation. It needs to be Floyd. Like, this in this particular moment, that needs to be Floyd. And and that leaves us with one more Greyjoy, the more disgraced Greyjoy, <laughs> if you will. The one who doesn't have all of who he was once upon a time. But, the, it stay, but seems to stay around, though. Yeah, he can Like, he, this person stays around and within a lexicon. He takes a beating, too. But he stays around. Yeah, he sticks. Ja Rule. Dion Greyjoy will be played ja by the role of Ja Rule. Because remember, Dion had his little rise. Mm-hmm. It was a whole season almost where he, he was running, running uh, Winterfell. After Winterfell, it was kind of... And Ja Rule, another thing about Ja Rule is, is that he has lost his, his balls, as they would say, when 50 Cent took him off. Fair. Still came back around and was losing, went to jail for tax evasion. Mm-hmm. No, he went to jail first... For having a gun in New York City where mm-hmm. you used to legally have a gun. Then went to jail for tax evasion and came back out every time and was still around us in our, in, in our conversations. Yeah. But all the while, even when he's on, getting disrespected by other people too, just like Dion. Constantly. Constantly. Put to it, the test, losing the test, now getting disrespected by lots of people at one time, but yet he still is around. And thought he had the greatest idea to uh, uh, start the fire fest. Mm-hmm. And go out to the east and, and uh, help out Danny, which wasn't a bad idea. On Not paper. a bad idea at all. No. But he didn't think it all the way through that Euron then was st- had most of the fleet on their back. And that's fair. That's fair. Even I thought I'll plan. It sound like like the fire festival sound great on paper. Yeah, 
it wasn't all the way thought all the way out. Yeah, no, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. So the role, the role of job rule will be there. We got a few people. I'm gonna speed through here, yeah. and then we go get to some of the. We're gonna get to some of the main people here. We just go mention these. You got questions about it? Highlight us about it. Uh, playing the role of Liana Mormont uh, from the from the Bear Islands is Cardi B. <laughs> yep. Just a boss hog chick that ain't taking nothing off of nobody. Mm-hmm. She fits in perfect into that spot. Playing the role of Ollie, who stabbed Jon Snow finally in the chest, who looked up to Jon Snow in a big in, in a big way. He is Eric Garner. Who killed Nipsey Hussle? <laughs> Keep that in mind yep. as we go down the road. Playing the role of the king beyond the wall, Mance Raider, and that's Master P. <laughs> we got to stop with that because people will be like, "What?" <laughs> he look. He so tapes out of the trunk, mm-hmm. which is basically gathering all those people outside the wall because those wildlings weren't together at first. Mm-mm. He basically starts selling tapes out of the trunk and figure out a way to make his own tribe and his own money. Mm-hmm. And made it all the way to Platinum Records and had a whole army attacking the wall and trying to go into West Throats and get his people some land. Yeah, and that's Master P. That's just basically what Master P did from Oakland to New, to New Orleans, yep. to Houston, <laughs> to everything. That's Master P. He took the journey doing that. Playing the role of Osha, who escorted Bran and Recon Stark through the North as long as she could. Harriet Tubman. <laughs> Delivered them. Delivered them. Uh, it did whatever it took to get her to where he's at until Ramsey Bolton got a hold of her. Um, who else do we have here that we could hit on Benjen. the fast on the fast scrolling? Talking about over there towards the wall. Let's go to Benjen. Yeah. All right. So playing the role of Benjen Stark, who will be play, doing two different things in this, both alive and not quite alive, is Ice Cube. <laughs> I mean, he was the first Ranger of the Night's Watch, which is essentially Ice Cube with the curl is with that- the curl <laughs> and the skull cap on, where it's like you one of the coldest people, and then you end up being. Something completely different, but you come out of nowhere and still let people know that you're cold. So basically, <laughs> it was Benjamin Stark it was Ice Cube on the BET Awards when he hopped in that cipher, <laughs> and people was like, "Oh shit, Cube still it's got for, it." He back, but he's like, "But I can't stay though." Yeah, I'm not here to do this full time anymore because I got a lot of other stuff I got to do. <laughs> so like, that's that's who Benjamin Stark is now. So <laughs> shout out to Benjamin Stark as O'Shea Jackson slash Ice Cube, and the Ice Cube makes even more sense because he way north of the wall now. Like, they put the thing in his heart and turned him into, like, low-key a White Walker. Yeah. So, but he got to keep who he is. He got that White Walker formula version, too, the remix, <laughs> a little bit. Um, all right, so now we are at, like, Winterfell mm-hmm. and with the Starks and with the people that, you know, I think the people that are more loved than anybody else here on the show. Um, oh, no, one more person to hit real quick before we get up there with them. Um, Davo Seaworth, who has been both with Stannis and has been with John. Mm-hmm. So we can hit him on the on the turnaround here. Yeah. Davo Seaworth is... It's Slim Charles from The, from the Wire. <laughs> Davos Super is so, loyal. Davos is so unique, we had to cre- use another character <laughs> from a him. different show to describe him. there's nobody him. like him. There's nobody else like either there's one There's nobody that's been on either side and been super loyal, and nope, and both sides aren't mad that he left them because they understand what they had to do. Yeah. And he's, he has a great moral compass, yeah. and you want him as a soldier. And he's like, I'll just do whatever we need to do. If I need to go all the way to King's Landing, like, yo... He sent Gendry off in a boat and then went back and got him. And then went back. That's like that's like a two month trip. <laughs> Cause we lo- we didn't know what happened to Davos for like half a season. Bruh, that is a journey when there's no airplanes or no cars or nothing. Fine, that is so. a journey. Go get go get, get hey, nobody knew who he was going to get either. He's like, I'm going to go get somebody. I'm gonna get somebody. I'll be right back in a few. Or I won't. One way or the other. <laughs> um says we're at King's Landing though now. Um, let's go with um, well, well, let's go with, with someone that protected the Stark's children. Well, before we do that, let's go to the people that. No, we can go to people to cause the trouble. Okay, so we're going into King's Landing now. No, we don't have to go to King's Landing yet. Let's go to, with the because let's talk about how the trouble happened. So the Starks were over Winterfell. But then they had to get out of there. Mm-hmm. Rob had left to go avenge his pops. Right, and then and, Theon came in and took over while, and while the, he was... It, a, and, a, but Theon, secretly behind that happening, his daddy was like, I don't want no part of this, and then set him up, and then the Boltons hopped in. Mm-hmm. And he that's, gave him up to the Boltons because the Boltons were still down with the Starks at and, that time. And the Boltons are Roose Bolton, who, is the, who was the lord of the flayed men or whatever mm-hmm. it was up there. And that's Snoop Dogg. Mm-hmm. OG... Kind mm-hmm. of relaxed. You don't never really see him get up, but you know he got that he got that trouble and in him. Been on, but he's been on multiple record labels. Exactly, exactly. He's been been on multiple record labels. 
Exactly. No disrespect to him with that, but I'm just saying. But he has a great moral compass. It's like Roos. Roos has seized the opportunity and be like, okay, it's time for me to better come up. We ready to do a little bit more. Move this bolt name up a little bit. Y'all gonna give me Winterfell? Bet. Yeah. So, I mean, he ends up being like, he, he, he's kind of had to jump around. He had to jump around for some reasons. But we'll get back to the other half of the Boltons because <laughs> we got to get to the betrayal that put them in play. So, Roos Bolton is over that. That's Snoop Dogg around mm-hmm. here. But the uh, let's finally get into the um, let's get into the Starks here. Uh, there's a few we people. Didn't do Egret. Well, but that's north of the wall. Yeah, but we did um, Mance already. That's what we already did Mance. Well, let me just put yeah, her on the fine. credits. We'll yeah. just put her on the credits. At this point, we're into the good part of the story. The other people like that yeah, can get skipped fine. now. At this point, so um, so the Starks are going like this, with the exception of we're going to do the, the true Stark, Starks in name, Ned Stark. It's Martin Luther King, dog. <laughs> yeah, he died for, died for everybody, man. He didn't know it was going to happen either. Hey, man, he was about principles. He was about peace. He was about didn't China. Know that, didn't know that switch rule was happening behind the scenes. Hey, he was he was so locked in on the peace that he didn't see that he ain't see the evil approaching the right way. Mm-hmm. He got jammed up, and he died for his principles, same way MLK did. But, hey, he's still revered. You can't go too far without hearing about MLK, yeah. just like you can't hear go too far without hearing about Ned Stark. If there was a Ned, if there were days in Westeros, there would be a Ned Stark day <laughs> where be. the banks would be closed. <laughs> it probably is one actually in uh, Winterfell. There probably. probably is one in Winterfell. Yeah, there's probably yeah, they one. They got the whole crypt down there with all the uh, former rulers down there. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so Ned Stark is a power broker in this thing. So let's get to the rest of the power brokers. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go through all of them right now. Tywin Lannister. He was Michael Jordan, man. I disagree with this when I said he was baby a cash money. <laughs> See, I don't think the baby I don't think the baby got the reach and got the the pure Michael Jordan about that cash, period. Baby is it? I know. Baby's about that stunting. Michael Jordan is about that strategy. And Michael jo- and, and, uh-huh. and Michael Jordan's legacy has way deeper roots than baby on cash money. Not even close. Michael Jordan's one of the four pi- four pillars of eighties African Americanism. Baby is not that to the two thousands or the nineties. Yeah, but baby owned he owned the most pop, three purple artists at the same time. I get it. Michael Jordan is still selling shoes that came out yeah, 30 years ago yeah. and re-upping and keeping the Jordan name going on credit. And he's bought NBA teams. He's bought a piece of Nike. He just does. Michael Jordan has infinite credit he does. In, the, in it. And he's but at the same time, everybody know Mike don't be tuned in on the misuse. No, though. <laughs> he don't. Mike really out here to move shoes. Move and merchandise. That's why Ty, Ty would not understand that that game was changing on him too. And sell that Jordan name. And then before you know it, he got jammed up, and Jay-Z shot an arrow through his heart while he was on the toilet. <laughs> Jay-Z shot Michael Jordan through the heart with an arrow yeah. and then got out of town. <laughs> with, uh, with Barack Obama. With, with, no, he linked up with Barack eventually, but he was with uh, – he left town with Wendy Williams. <laughs> Jay-Z got smuggled out by Wendy Williams. Which and, is ironic, and then caught up with his other homeboy, Varys, who would be his uh, – That's, that's, that's Wendy, Wendy Williams, Williams, yeah. But I'm talking about then got there with – uh, Jorah. Oh, with Joe Biden. Joe Biden. <laughs> he hooked up with Joe Biden eventually. Yeah. So uh, going back through a couple more of the uh, of the uh, power players here, uh, we're gonna go through the Stark children, the Stark wife. We will go to, to the wife. We'll go to Catelyn Stark. It's Jada Pinkett, man. Hundred percent. She got ride all of them. You. She got all of them strong characters like Jada Pinkett. We'll ride with you. We'll, we'll put some issues on blast that you need to hear, mm-hmm. and uh, hopefully Jada ends up with a you know a better end. Than Catelyn yeah. does. Um, that, but let's go through each one of the Stark children now. Uh, Rob Stark. Rob Stark will be getting played by the role of... Where'd Rob go? He's in here somewhere. Oh, Rob Stark played the role of Malcolm X in this thing. Because <laughs> Rob Stark heard about injustice happening, and he was like, no, nah, we ain't finna talk. <laughs> like, my old Yo, dudes, my old dudes about that talking and about that strategy. I ain't about that talking, boss. <laughs> that ain't me, dog. Even if it ends up getting me clipped. I ain't going for it that way. We, he rolled out immediately. Yes. Like, I, I think he found his dead died and was like, and pulled, just pulled the flag up to, like, to get everybody together. Like, Rob Stark put on some hooping shorts and the shoes that was closest to him and headed out. <laughs> and grabbed his He put on a his hoodie sword. on and grabbed a sword and was like, we out. We riding <laughs> on these now. Um Sansa. Sansa Stark. This is you. You yeah, did this. Did, yeah. Sansa Stark. You take Sansa, Sansa Stark. Sansa Stark, man. It's Kevin Durant. <laughs> You can't, you can't tell me Kevin Durant 
uh, he has had, he was a darling at first. He was maybe a little bit naive to what's going on. And then the game changed up on him. He decided to become a stone cold person in this game of the NBA and his business and knew that nobody really cared about him, that it was all about what he had to do for himself and his family, his people. I mean, and that's Kevin Durant. And Kevin Durant is about to get is about to get even worse too because this summer he's gonna become the ultimate enemy because he's gonna go to another we'll place. We'll see how Sansa looks in this season. We'll see if Kevin Durant, aka Sansa. When you think of Sansa this year, you think of Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Durant. Durant. As we go through the NBA playoffs and Game of Thrones at the same time, realize <laughs> that the plight of Sansa Stark and the plight of Kevin Durant are intertwined. Or one and the same. God damn. Uh, we already touched on Arya. She is Andre three thousand, mm-hmm. and then we will go down to Bran. And once again, this is another one of your creations, so I will leave it to you. I think and after I said it, and he said it was probably the most brilliant thing I've ever come up with. On this the is podcast. the peak. This is the peak of your entertainment <clears throat> career. Jaden Smith. Yeah, he be on some different. He's like clairvoyant. He's a, he's he's like he was. I remember when he remember when he was a kid. He was real joyful, just like uh uh Brand. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, he got real stoic and mm-hmm. like deep and like. The, because the you know, weights of the world started leaning yeah, on his and chest. Yeah, like, man, we got all this paper, but it don't mean nothing. Yeah. That's what he was like. He was like, we got all this paper, but it don't mean nothing. You want to get on the microphone and say hi to everybody? You want to come over here, but then you can't say hi to everybody? Okay. Um, so, like I said, shout out to my daughter who made a guest appearance here. Um. But he he is literally everything. Like you go look at his Twitter. His Twitter talks like Bran. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be like, you know, I was looking at the stars, and if you ever been out, have you ever been on the other side of the stars? Think about that. You're like, damn, I don't. Even, <laughs> I, never about, I never. I, oh, shit. Like I don't, don't want to. Right. Like that. Where are you at, brother? I don't want to. He wore do a that. Batman costume to his to his uh, to his prom. Yeah. Like. Yeah. What is Bran be wearing? Just wearing a just a blanket. <laughs> Bran's basically wearing a sled for like four <laughs> seasons in a row. And 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 un, and un, don't even care when he's riding around. You just riding me around. Mm-hmm. And I can see Jaden being like that. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you're not my girlfriend. You're just the person I ride in the car with to the store. Yeah, like really giving people that hardcore shrug. Yeah, off. like, but well, you pick me up, Jaden. But who's driving? Mm. <laughs> Like what? Have you ever thought about do cars care where they go to? Exactly. Like <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck you talking about? Pull dude? over, but I, don't. I know you're the first free black man, but goddamn. All right, so we're gonna hit a couple of people real quick here, and then get back into the storyline here. Playing the part of Samuel Tarley, who is John's homeboy, and is you know just wise beyond his years, and be hitting you with that knowledge, and maybe you didn't even know was out there. It's Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> I could easily yeah. see Kendrick Lamar being the one black dude at the wall that's just dropping knowledge and those like that young, that young ass, wide old, wise old sage. Mm-hmm. And they're sitting there like, I mean, you should be living like this, and why not? And and then <laughs> and then speaking of brand, we actually have to, we have to hit the three eyed raven, who for our culture, the three eyed raven for years has been telling us what's coming up and what's going on around us and what's happened in the past and why it all makes sense together. <laughs> is Spike Lee? <laughs> Spike Lee sitting up in a tree on the sideline of a Knicks game. I told y'all these white folks are gonna be acting like this. Yeah, they've been doing it. Watch, I've been trying to tell you, but y'all ain't been listening. The Walkers is coming, and y'all know who the y'all know who the uh, the Night King is. I know you've been telling them who it is. Yeah, we'll tell y'all momentarily if you don't know. Exactly. He's been telling y'all. <laughs> Spike Lee has been telling y'all he want all the white women. So he's been trying to clear out of Westeros to make room for white women. So playing the part. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what the White Walkers in our, in our generation. Does. Oh, exactly. Playing the part of the Hound. Is Mike Tyson? Because <laughs> it makes it makes all the sense in the world, though. Because Mike Tyson has had two very different, yeah. very different lives. There was Mike Definitely Tyson, who was just brutalizing cats and just women, just like he was. Yes, and doing whatever he felt like doing, mm-hmm. whatever was called to do, wherever the money was at, he was on that action. And then there's more peaceful Mike Tyson now, who roams the countryside with the dip set. And you know not to fuck with him, though. But you know, <laughs> like that video that dropped of Mike Tyson yeah, putting them hands him. in. You, it was like in a store. He was sitting there. You need to be smart and know it's still in Mike Tyson. Yeah. So even though now he's smiling and he seems like he's a lovable guy and all this. And he's doing his stage plays and all that. The animal is still in there. And Mike Tyson will give it to you just like the hound will. Uh, playing the part of Joffrey Baratheon. Easily the most annoying person in the history of TV. A member of the O.J. No Scotland. 
Kanye West. It couldn't be nothing else. No. Kanye West. You could insert Kanye into the show and have him be Joffrey, and I wouldn't notice the difference. <laughs> I, like, I think more black people on this show. There's a, it seems a little, little darker, don't it? <laughs> yeah, it do. Are you sure? I'd be like, I'd be like are you sure? Okay, no. Nah. I don't know. Look about the same to me. It seems about the same to me. Uh, so, yeah. Playing the part of Brianna Toth, Remy Ma. <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't get no fucks. She going to ride out, and she's still going to get what it do, too, though. Yeah. At yeah. some point. Yeah, you know at some point, she's gonna, some point she's going to do that. Now we have a split character that we're going to have to address a couple of different ways. Playing the part of the two creepiest people in TV is Walter Frey is R. Kelly. Who was marrying his own his own daughters repeatedly, and or just young girls from the and town, just young girls from, from the town. town. Anybody that was born, any women that were born in the town, belonged to Walter Frey. Mm-hmm. Just like R. Kelly felt about the South Side of Chicago, <laughs> and also being portrayed by R. Kelly in this world is Craster, <laughs> who had a whole village of just his daughters and killed and sacrificed the boys so there would only be his daughters around him north of the wall. There's enough room for two R. Kelly's in this messed up world. <laughs> He's got, he gets double checks. Yeah, twice the check. He twice needs the two, though. Um, now, before we get to, we have two special guests left, and then we have three power players. We need to get one person out of the way. And I'm going to leave this one to you. Mm-hmm. Playing the part of Lord Peter Baelish, a.k.a. Littlefinger. Y'all already know. It's Jermaine we got Jackson. Jermaine Jackson, man. You can't tell me Jermaine ain't. Man, Jermaine are always behind the scenes doing something crazy. He he uh backstabbed Michael, he backstabs his brothers. He's actually had a baby by Randy Jackson's baby mama. He's got two kids with her and they married her. So so as people know, I have a high disdain for Jermaine Jackson. It was only one person that could be Littlefinger. It could be Jermaine Jackson. He think he was smart doing it behind the scenes. Well, there's no more nobody slimier than Littlefinger, and there's definitely nobody, nobody slimier, slimier than, than Jermaine yeah. Jackson. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's nobody slimier than him, man. Even Bobby Womack is slimy, but not as slimy as that. All right. So there's two people that are left out of this mm-hmm. so far that everything could come down to now. They've only shared one scene in the history of the entire show. Mm-hmm. Maybe two. No, one. There was no way that they were in one in the first episode. Um, so first, Cersei Lannister. Mm-hmm. Now, this was tough for us because this came down to two people. There was going to be two white people in West Westeros, but we decided on one. And we swapped. And that was Joe Biden. Yeah, and it ended up being Joe Biden. So playing the role of Cersei is going to be Omarosa <laughs> because it nearly was Donald Trump because the parallels are. But also Omarosa, but it's funny, Omarosa is willing to burn shit down too, though, t- for, her, for her own benefit. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And then, and then try to like in, in, ingrain herself back into whatever things. For whatever purpose. Whatever works for her. Whatever yep. makes sense for her. She's about it. So Cersei Lannister is going to play that. I mean, the treachery. I'm sure Omarosa is not above giving it up to anybody that oh, she feels like. All. Whatever makes her happy, whatever advances what she's it's on. It's probably many a brother on Capitol Hill. Yeah. That's then. Yeah. Talk yeah. that. Talk to her about yeah. what's it, whatever. And then done all of that. So. Um, did we get number eighteen? We're gonna go to those. Those are gonna be last. Those are gonna be last. Eighteen. Uh, Oh, I guess we can do that. <laughs> I'll just say before we get to the heavy ones. So, <laughs> Jon Snow had a very intense moment where he thought he was going to be able to rescue another member of his family. And that would have been Recon Stark, mm-hmm. who had maybe the most ridiculous moment in the history of the TV show. Where he ran straight. When he just didn't know how to bob and weave. And Ramsey Bolton... Shot an arrow through his back. And playing the part of Ramsey Bolton, we'll get to that in a moment here because I, <laughs> right wanted, to, I wanted to pit that right next to uh, right next to John Snow. But uh, Recon Stark is being played by Bow Wow today. <laughs> Daryl's on a roll. This is all yeah. Daryl's. Uh, you right know now. you forgot about Bow Wow in the beginning. You're like, man, I want all them Starks to get back together and be happy. And you're like, man, Recon was so cool and cute. And then after he died, you was like, all right, we're gonna get this Battle of the Bats on. We forgot all about him. <laughs> Nobody it's, ever, nobody ever thinks about the legacy of Recon. Yeah, it's crazy. But they remember him at the beginning. Yeah, they remember all the Stark. You be like, you, for the first two, three seasons, you was where's where's the, where's the rest of the Stark brothers at and Stark sisters? I want them all back together. Since he's dead now, and I don't think they got him down in the keep. They ain't did they ain't did no barbecues for him. They ain't did nothing for him uh, in representing. No Recon. hashtag. No even no hashtag. I think for they Recon. ain't even. I ain't even think they buried him at Winterfell. And it's I because think everybody that remembers that he just ran that straight that straight seventy. And he's like me, he wasn't no start. One hundred twenty yard dash. 
Like he wouldn't have started. He's a man. He and then got ham- hammered up with that arrow, who was shot by Ramsey Bolton, <laughs> who we have decided is Candace, Candace Owens. Owens. Yes. Uh, who just um, remind them all who Candace uh, Owens Candace is. Candace Owens is the one that uh, came up with the uh, Rexit. Uh, no, it's like Rexit for like Democrats, where like basically uh, the what was the the program in London where they're gonna try to keep out Muslims from uh, Brexit. Brexit, but they was gonna be Rexit for like. Black people, no, Blexit for black people getting out of the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. And she's also the one that was supposed to be um, uh, influencing uh, Kanye West and his thought process, uh, the whole nine. So she says some comments in front of Congress um, about Southern, um, uh, a Southern uh, she said that Southern, Southern, that the Southern strategy to keep black people uh, from getting rights was a myth. Yeah, that didn't ha- that that's something that didn't occur, right? Like you're a genius at, at, at this point. I mean, it's such a turncoat that we don't even know what to do with that. This one. and her edges are bad as hell, though. Like, yeah, see, that's a sure that's a surefire up. sign of somebody who ain't with the culture because our yeah. people ain't walking around like that. Yeah, like like her her edges are all messed up, man. Like and and she, you know, she's just a poison, man. Mm-hmm. And that's what Ramsey was. Yeah, Ramsey was as, as as thorough of a poison to the entire. North as it has ever <laughs> been seen. So this gets us down to who look who's looking like the definitive hero of the program. We'll mm-hmm. see how the year goes for him. I think there's going to be a big swerve involving him this year. I don't think I think that it's going to be a bigger swerve and a more permanent one than we've ever seen before. And that's Jon Snow. Oh, we we're missing twenty thirty nine and forty. No, I skipped those on purpose. Okay. Um. So it's um. So it's we've only got three people left okay. here at this point. Yeah. Uh, but Jon Snow, Jon Snow is the is the definitive. I think the the game has started to kind of parallel his story and where he's going. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's become a thing about who he is and not just his fights and not just his battles and not just what he's about. But you know, you, you're getting behind him. You're rooting for him. He's come back from the grave. You know, it's that that even death. Hasn't been able to like hold Jon Snow out of the out of the out equation. Of mix, yeah. So, and for that very reason, we're saying that Jon Snow is none other than Nipsey Hussle. Yeah, rest in peace, man. Who, in death, is having an even greater impact than he did in life, and that's Jon Snow. He did his time on the watch, but he made sure that his people was always taken care mm-hmm. of. His focus was always on the North, and then on the Wall. And then on even adapting with the wildlands. I mean, and like he was always with people and was pro people, even when it came at the expense of being ridiculed by his own folks. Mm-hmm. And then he ends up dying for that. He dies for what he believes in, right? He, he dies at a place that he had adopted as like being John his at home. The wall. Exactly. And no, I'm talking about John. Right yeah, that's something like So I mean, he's, like he he dies Gibson, at yeah. the he dies in a place he adopted, being the wall. That was his home. Now he'd given up his home. He never felt like he had one in the first place. He never was all the way in. But, you know, he gave up his home only to be killed at his home. And But then the thing about it is you realize is that he dies for a petty reason that was somebody else's own agenda, and then he is resurrected. Now, in a very literal sense, this happened with Jon Snow's character. <laughs> but with we Nipsey Hussle. See, now, Nipsey Hussle comes back. We got a whole no, a whole Yeah, other that's thing. a whole We're different We're talking about The thing. Walking Dead. We're talking about a whole other show then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, but Nipsey Hussle's word has lived on. His message mm-hmm. has lived on. The marathon continues. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Did you watch it, some of the funerals? And he's still doing I don't watch funerals. But I mean he's uh <laughs> but he's doing the he's doing the work still. Yeah, he's doing know? it all. He's and that's Jon Snow. That's the Jon Snow. That's the that's the fighter, that's the guy who's out here trying to make things better for everybody else, no matter what the resistance is. And if he's gotta hop off a horse and take on an entire army <laughs> on his own, he would which do was it. like <laughs> Nipsey taking on the hood and the police and the detractors and all these things all at one time, he's gonna do it. And look, it's still cats back at the wall that fight for uh, Jon Snow right now. He's not even there. Mm-hmm. Same thing in the hood. Like, he ain't even there. And Pat's is like, yo, what would Jon do? Uniting people that never united the fight together before. Nipsey was on that. Yep. <laughs> and that's what and that's what, uh, that's what what Jon Snow is on, too. So that, that's where we see West Westeros. We got two, we got two final honorary <laughs> shout-outs here, some of the most beloved things here. We can't forget about our boy Hodor, man. Yeah, man. We, we can't, can't forget everybody love Hodor. Hold Hodor, the door. Hodor. Hold the door. Yeah, man. Hold the door. Hodor took held it down for folks. Do what he needed to do. And nobody had anything bad to say about Hodor because they knew his mission. 
And that's why we say Hodor is Michelle Obama. Obama. Yeah. Holding it down for all of us, man. Holding it down for the black black men, black women, everybody. She got the biggest book going on right now. She's up here motivating people uh, to do better with their lives. And she just been holding it down in general. When, when they go high, I mean, when they go low, we go high. Exactly. You Love know. for the people. And then finally, there's three, there's, there's three dragons. If you've never seen the show even, you know there's three dragons out there. I mean, and I, I think in this universe, they're named... Offset. Damn, I don't even... Oh, take off. Offset, take off, and Quavo, the yeah, Migos. I, I knew you was good. I, 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 yeah, I, I yeah. wanted to see you. I just wanted to see you admit that, that hip-hop mention. That did something for me. <laughs> yeah, man, the Migos got to be the dragons. They come out of nowhere, all three of them, hit you with some hot fire, and end up catching the whole summer on, on flames. <laughs> and then it's and then it's like, damn! I know a lot more of these songs than I thought I did. <laughs> and you know them damn dragons, even if you don't and know we, the show. You know them dragons. One from time to time, when uh, uh, when uh, Offset goes to jail, every once in a while. <laughs> so they sometimes they're down to two dragons. Every once in a while, that has to happen. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. Offset goes to jail. Yeah. Um, and we got one more, man. The one more, the Night King, OJ. Oh. <laughs> We'll uh, you know, you know, the Night King. That's like Spike Lee was telling them about the. I thought we were talking about human beings still. I, the, the grand finale is OJ. The Night is King is that baby. now the wall is falling, <laughs> and OJ's bringing all which them is white the Mason women Dixon line. <laughs> <laughs> the wall in this world is along the Mason Dixon line, and all the white women that OJ wanted to bring with him is coming with him. Mm, doom, doom. And there's a whole bunch of other little. He got some other other guys with him. He got Clarence Thomas with him. He's bringing all all of those, the, and it's it's whites. And then you got other ice. Uh, yeah, you other, got ice other. lieutenants and yep. all sorts of stuff. <laughs> OJ Simpson now is closing in on black on West Westeros, threatening to make everything that we have here. Think about it: OJ versus Nipsey Hussle. Oh, it could come down to OJ and, versus and Barack and Barack Obama. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. OJ Simpson versus Nipsey Hussle and Barack Obama this season on West West Rose. <laughs> West West, y'all. <laughs> Make sure y'all email straightoldlc at gmail.com. Let us know y'all thoughts. Your we need to know questions. your character. Yeah, Somebody your else characters. fit better in there. Somebody we put we in a missed. lot of work on this, man. Go, we put in a lot of work on this, so we definitely want y'all to see what y'all think. Let us know what y'all think. We will be back soon. Peace.